you all took Pluto from me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's about time we got to talk about that. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> what the hell happened? Because as a kid, me as a kid, so I'm 44 now. So I was a kid in elementary school in the 80s. It was all about Pluto. Yeah. Yep. Like how mom, it was Pluto. It was so cool. You all took that from me. Yeah, I know. It's it was a tough it was a tough time in our uh, in our adult lives where we lost a planet. And I I was I'm right there with you. It was it was a hard uh, a hard pill to swallow uh, losing a planet. And then I you know like I get to think about this a little a lot. I mean because that's what people you know people get me with all the time. Um, and so it what it ended up motivating me to write this book, the book called How to Teach Grown Ups About Pluto. So because this is what would happen would be uh, like I give a, a presentation, I give a talk and then like uh, you know, kids would come up at the end and ask questions and be like, oh, man, I'm like, have you heard about this new discovery by the James Webb Space Telescope? I'm like, yeah, it's really cool. And, oh, have you heard about this eclipse coming? I'm like, yeah, it's really cool. Like because they're. Uh, the same mental age as I am <laughs> really they're into the star stage like his kids go in that star stage you know like there's the dinosaur stage and there's star stage and so I want them to stay in that star stage because that's where I am but uh, inevitably an adult would sidle up maybe sometimes even like hip check the kid out of the way and be like yeah but Pluto should still be a planet <laughs> and I'm like what what do you that's rude. I'm talking to the people here. We were talking about Pluto. And you got to come in, bust in, and say this. And so, like, I I think I even once said to a kid, I'm really sorry about that. I know you're interested in other things. So, uh, so I was like, I need to make a book for the kids to help walk their grownups through the trauma yeah. of losing the planet. Um, and is so, it true as you go through this? Did you give it back to us? No, of course not. I'm not going to give you the Pluto. I'm going to give you Pluto back. That's but, what I'm saying. But I'm not going to give you the planet back. No, but you're giving us. You're, you're making yes. us try to feel like it's it's still a relevant thing, even though oh, you yeah. took the planet away. Yes, yes. So you're I, just calling it a ball of ice or something. Is all you're doing. A world. I call it a world. Oh my gosh. Okay. Tell us why you took it away. Why? So, what happened? Where we called it a planet? Yep. Did we learn something, or did somebody say no? That's no. What happened? Yeah, it, it was. There's like this great history to this. Like, uh, so it was discovered 1930 uh, at the Lowell Observatory in Flagstaff, Arizona. And I will not discount that this was an American discovered planet. There's no doubt that plays boom, into boom. this factor. American planet, you gotta mm -hmm. uh, throws in there. Um, and so when it was discovered, it was thought to be the size of Earth. Uh, that was the initial evidence was pointed to that. Uh, then they look at it again a couple years later, eh, maybe Mars size. A couple years later, maybe Mercury size. A couple years later, maybe Moon size. Now we're like, wait, so we started at 8,000 miles in diameter, and now we know it's about 1,400 miles in diameter. So it's about the distance from Cincinnati to uh, Denver. So, all right, so it shrunk down in size. Eh, that's okay. You know, it still goes around the sun planet seems good uh and so that's where it laid in this zone of okay it's got a weird size it's got a weird orbit it's tilted compared to all the other planets it gets closer to the sun than neptune for 20 years so yeah by the way yeah when i was in school so 1979 1999 neptune was farther than pluto was i never learned that in school my teacher never nope, taught me that never taught us that because it was always Pluto last, but yep. it wasn't. When, when, so, yeah, when we were in school, we weren't taught the right thing. Um, but still, astronomers were like, yeah, it's still a planet. Let's not, yeah, it's a weird planet, but it's a planet. Uh, so the, the real problem happened in the 90s. So our telescopes got better. Uh, digital photography came in. CCD cameras started being attached to the telescopes, and they started finding other things out there. So from 1930 to 1992, nothing. They found nothing out there. Uh, 1992, uh, these uh, students and the professor, I can't remember which school it was at, but they found this one just like out as a fluke or uh, trying to recreate some other experiments, and they found this one. And then a couple dozen are found, then a couple hundred are found. Planets. Uh, well, things. things. <laughs> Pluto-like objects. So objects that are out in Pluto's orbit, Similar compositions, similar orbits, similar origins. So then you're up to a couple thousand of these things. And the uh, astronomers had to make a decision. They're like, what are we going to do with these 2,000 things? And so 
um, they uh, some were like, make them all planets, make them all planets, make them all planets. I was like, how am I going to teach the kindergartners the 2000 planets? This is not going to work, man. This is not going to work. We can't. These are not the same things. So uh, there's a precedence for this, too. So for all the legal minded people out there, here's our precedence that planets have been kicked out of the planet club in the past. Um, lots of them have been kicked out in the past. Uh, so we've been through this before. Um, and so I walk through people in the book, all the other planet demotions that have happened. Um, uh, the sun and moon used to be planets 500 years ago. They got kicked out of the planet club. Uh, asteroids were discovered in the early 1800s. There was about uh, 37 of them that were temporarily planets. They all got kicked out of the planet club 1859. So I say, if you're mad about Pluto, then I know you're equally mad about all the asteroids that were kicked out in 1859 because you should be equally outraged. They were planets. Those poor kids in the 1840s had to get new textbooks. I'm outraged <laughs> that my fifth grade science project was building the solar system and Pluto was that last cool little planet and you all took it away. That's why I don't care about the asteroids. I don't care about the 2,000 other little things in the sky. I care about, I don't think, it wasn't genuine. Yeah. <laughs> I'm messing with you, man. I know, I it's know. Just, but it's like, why? So here's, I didn't know about these other 2,000 objects. Right, right. That's Are they the, similar to Pluto? Yeah, yeah. So uh, so this is the, the process that I went through with this, too. And so I, I included this in the book, which is uh, very unique for a kid's book. But I have the five stages of grief illustrated in this have I, have I shown them all here today? Well, so yeah, you start with denial. So this is the stage that I went through. I was like, no, they no, no, they can't kick Pluto out of the planet. I won't have it. Uh, then there's, wait, shoot, what's number two? So we got denial. We got, oh no, now I can't remember. What's number two? We'll get it for you in a minute. Anyway, so so Jack will, he'll do the five stages. All of, right, uh, look me up. Uh, yeah, Steve, you look that up, Jack. So I know there's denial. Anger is number two. Well, they, I was I was angry yeah, with yeah, yeah. So they kind of go together, but anger comes in. If he like, doesn't hit it, then tell us. Yeah, anger's number two. Uh, bargaining number three. Bargaining number three is what, so. Yeah, so what are we doing with that? The bargaining would go. Uh, okay. Let's keep Pluto, and we'll keep some of those new ones, the two thousands, but like maybe the ones, the biggest ones. So that's what I said. I was like, okay. Uh, all right, we'll keep Pluto, but maybe we need like a size thing. Like if it's Pluto size or bigger, let's call it a planet. So that's the bargaining. Uh, so then they found something bigger called Eris. At least they thought it was bigger at the time. Uh, we've since found out it's not as big, but they're, they're almost exactly the same. So Pluto and Eris are the same size, essentially. So, is Eris a moon of one of the planets? No, Eris is its own thing, goes around the sun even farther out than Pluto. Okay, sorry. All right. So bargaining. Bargaining. So I went through the bargaining. And then there's the depression. Fourth is depression, uh, where you're like, I know they're right, but I still hate it. Um, and then five, finally. Now, don't tell me acceptance. Acceptance is five. Oh, that is such BS. So um, the idea with the book is to understand like i went through those five stages too and i and this is like a natural reaction everybody has to this and i'm hoping just to move people at least one step over so if we can get you from anger to bargaining i'll take that as a as a step uh, because you got to think of like well so what's the alternative so are we gonna how many plants are we gonna have there yeah. are we gonna have pluto grandfathered in just because we love it even though it's not can I vote for that? And that's the way I could teach the other two thousand. Oh, you're in the bargaining stage. That's true. And uh, so, so what are these things? What are the other? Was there shit? Now there's the problem. So here's so yeah, they, we're not sure what to make of this stuff. So the the what we found is like the solar system isn't this nice neat mm -hmm. categories that we had before. And I you know I joke and I say it this way. I was like you know. Pluto was a planet when we were pretty stupid. Like, you know, like our our information we had was very limited. Um, so it's like, you know, we've learned a lot since 1930. Um, and so when the Pluto debate happens, it's like, well, that's lost all those other things that we've actually found. Um, 
So what it looks like, our solar system, we have the sun in the center, you know, or virtually the center, that's the, the, our star. We have the inner planets, Mercury, Venus, Earth, and Mars, all have similar characteristics. We have asteroids in the asteroid belt. Now we're up to about 750,000 asteroids have been found. Um, we got the four outer planets, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune, gaseous planets. Then we got Pluto and the Pluto belt, basically. So that has a lot of different names. So those 2,000 things with, with Pluto belt, um, they're often called Kuiper belt objects, trans-Neptunian objects, Plutoids. Uh, what, so it's, it's not an easy thing to put them all together, but it is, it is different. Those, that population is way different than a planet. Um, so when it all came down uh, to the, the vote, um, there's a group that decides this stuff, which I will say I was not, I'm not invited onto this elite group, uh, because I'm a self-taught astronomer and they don't like self-taught astronomers. They like PhDs and all that kind of stuff. And I'm not invited. I didn't discover anything. That's I'm not bitter or anything like that or anything, but sounds like we need to, uh, have the five stage grief conversation. Yeah, here. no, I'm, I'm accepting cause I don't really want to be in their group anyway. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, I do. But okay, so we're I'm in the denial. Now that's still denial. Shoot, I maybe after you know a lot of people yeah. in the athletic Hall of Fames, they don't earn um, they don't earn induction until they die. So you have time. Yeah, I'll take an honorary thing. I'll do. Yeah, um, we have at least like sixty something years. Cause that's you true. I still got a long way to go. To, uh, yeah. So we don't know. So these things. Yeah. Well. So then. So this is where the human element comes in with astronomy. Is that they had to decide what a planet was in 2006, which is hilarious. Like here you have the best astronomers in the world, and they can't agree what a planet is, and like something you learn in you know second grade. Yeah. Um, and so they, they're for, they're forced to decide what this is, and it's like one of the funniest things to look back on is these these. Uh, and I say this with all respect, nerds. Nerds are, are uh, it's a term of endearment. Uh, In your world. Yeah. Maybe there is a little <laughs> bit of belittling. I will, yeah, now that I think about it. So you're going with it too. You're like, yep, they are. Especially especially that group that they don't want me also. I'll just call them nerds. Yeah, yeah, good, yeah. Boy, that's, that's a different stage of grief. But anyway, um, they, they had to like wrestle with this super easy – thing and and you know uh, to a kid they could be able to figure this out but to them it was like serious business we got to like negotiate exactly how this is going to be and um they uh they had this really elite group that formed that pro made a proposal there should be 12 planets and nobody hears about this because they kind of brushed it under the rug but at the time this was like the most yeah uh, and so I'm watching this all like virtually happening because I'm like, there something's gonna happen. They're gonna pick their planets. This is this could this be the is moment. exciting. This could be the moment the Pluto gets demoted. Let me watch them squirm a little bit. Um, and they're like, yeah, there's 12 planets. And this comes out. I'm like, 12. That was never one of the options. What are you talking about? 12. What are the 12? It's like Mercury. Okay. Venus. Earth. Mars. Jupiter. Saturn. Uranus. Neptune. Pluto. Eris, that tenth one. All right, I can accept Eris, I suppose. Uh, Ceres, which is an asteroid found 1801, that was a planet from 1801 to 1859 till it got kicked out, and it got included because it's roundish. I was like, all right, Ceres, I guess. I don't know, it's a... And then number twelve. Um, this is where they went too far. Number twelve was Sharon, which is. Pluto's largest moon. Our moon's not a planet. Correct. How would you? Okay, it doesn't take an astronomer. No, but they were like, well, Pluto and Sharon don't. Sharon doesn't go around Pluto. They go around each other. They're big enough. Sharon's big enough that they they're orbit like a double planet. Did I hit this something? No, or? you're good. Okay, sorry. So no, you're, you're okay. So it's like these two. They were like, yeah, it's a double planet. So we're gonna include them each as a planet. And I was like, ah, no, 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 this is nope. You're not going to do this. I let you take Eris in uh, series. I didn't like it. But nope. You can't make a moon, a planet. I don't care what you say. And luckily the people at the conference went berserk when they heard this, they were like, they had the same reaction. I did. They were like flipping over tables. Like who decided this? This is for 12 planets. 
oh, this is it. And so they, they like this committee came together, like, okay, well, we got to do something about this. This is 12 plants. This is embarrassing. People are watching us. Guy in Cincinnati is watching us. He's embarrassed by us. I would have paid money to be there to see the pocket protectors <laughs> uh, flying across uh, the room, yeah. the taped up glasses yep. flying all over the floor, right? Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> Telescope smashed, everything like that. It was, and so they're like, this group comes in and is like, all right. What do we say? We got eight planets. Remember the eight planets thing? Let's just do the eight planets. All right. All right. Everybody, eight planets, Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune. Vote I. 93% voted yes. Done deal. And I do believe if it wasn't for the terrible, horrible 12 planet proposal, maybe Pluto still would be there. But, but, I, but, I don't but know. Aries would be there too. Aries right? would probably be there yeah, okay, too. Aries, okay. So, uh, yeah. Now, the guy that convinced me so i you know i was following along this thing and i'm just like yeah i don't know what I, I didn't really know what i didn't really have a stake in the game other than i kind of wanted pluto to stay i was seeing the way it was going to stay was rapidly diminishing uh but the guy who convinced me was uh uh a guy named mike brown different mike brown than our cincinnati mike brown he's an astronomer from caltech he discovered eris he discovered lots of other things out there in the the Pluto belt, and he stood to gain the most from all these things being planets. He would be the greatest planet discoverer in the history of planet discoveries. This is a guy that knows the most about this area of the, the solar system, and he said, "Nope, these are not planets. I don't. I can't rightly say that these are planets. I did not discover planets, and I will." Uh, yeah, I, I can't, I can't do it. His whole family revolted against him and said, "What are you doing? These are pla say they're planets. We will be rich. Say your plan. Say they are planets." And he's like, "Can't do it." So even his own daughter was like turned on him. It's like, "Dad, these are planets," and he was like, "Nope, they're not planets." And so I met him soon after the demotion, where I was still a little hesitant. I was still like, "Eh," and um, he's just like they're different things they really are different things like if i would have found pluto today instead of found 1930 there's no way we would have put it in the same category and so it's just this tradition that uh that goes through and i know tradition is a big thing it's gonna be hard to get or get over so but, what truly what what in your mind makes a planet a planet so that's what i asked mike brown and i said so if you were to make a definition because by the way the definition that the, that, the, that group made stinks uh i mean it's terrible it's like it's a terrible definition they say a planet has to be round or has to go around the sun has to be big enough to be round and has to be can't share its orbit and i'm like yeah well it's kind of weird we share our orbit with yeah. asteroids and yeah it, it's, it's kind of weird it's, it's poorly weird. yeah and it was all because they had to rush and do this like in 20 minutes and and uh i i joke and i put this in the book like if only they had some english majors there they would have had a better definition but anyway um so mike brown i was like so what would you do if you would write this definition and he's just like yeah planet is a, u a uniquely big and important thing that goes around a star and there's eight things that fall into that category uniquely big and important thing goes around a star those are eight and those are the only eight and I was like, yeah, that's pretty good. Makes sense. <laughs> that's pretty good. When you just hear something, just makes sense. Yeah. It's like, okay. Yeah. Um, but yeah, he had a big impact on on uh, on me. And he's uh, the other thing that I find is the people that think Pluto um, should not be a planet are a lot more fun than the people think Pluto should be a planet. Okay, so I'm not fun. No, no, no. <laughs> now, uh, uh, and I'll, I'll give you just like an example because this is, you know, I, I think people probably have an impression of astronomers in, in certain ways, but I have this anecdote about Mike Brown that is just so good. Like, just, just sums up his mentality towards this stuff is that, so he discovers Eris, um, and he names it Eris. Eris is the uh, Greek goddess of discord and strife. He named it that because he knew the astronomers would start fighting and throwing pocket protectors and all that stuff. And he, of course, he thought that would be real fun to watch. So he names it that. But that wasn't his original name for it. He had an even better original name. The original name was Xena, X-E-N-A, as in Xena, the warrior princess. So if it wasn't going to be the strife and debate around it, that should have been the name. Should have been the name. So he wanted to start with an X because it would have been the 10th planet, which he 
would only say that jokingly. Um, also, he's a big fan of Xena, the Warrior Princess. So uh, I got to interview him uh, last year, and I asked him the question, which would be any nerdy astronomer type like myself would want to know, is like, so did you hear from Lucy Lawless about this and get to meet her and all that stuff? Because that's, of course, what I would want to do. Uh, I mean, that would be the perks of a job being an astronomer to meet Lucy Lawless, I would think. Uh, and he said, he said, oh, I don't think I've ever told anybody this, but, uh, you know, when all the press was coming up about this and I was getting all these interview requests, Lucy Lawless called and left me a message on my voicemail and I didn't pick up because I thought it was a joke. And I was like, what? But he better have saved the message still on his phone. I was like, what? You didn't, wait, you didn't, you didn't pick up. He's like, no, I didn't pick up. I thought it was a joke. I thought it was like a fake person. I'm like. You fool! <laughs> I'm like, you could have talked to Lucy Lawless. Um, so they later, later met, or at least talked on the phone and, and you know, like, kind of uh, had a little conversation later on, but it was like much later on. Um, so, but not to lose this completely, is that, uh, so he also found a moon around Eris. And he named the moon Dysnomia, which was another goddess, but it's the goddess of lawlessness. So Lucy Lawless gets something named after her. Sneaky way about that. And then, yeah, getting good with Xena works out pretty good. So what's up with this? 